Hey YouTube, got an Emerson folding knife for you today. This is the Emerson Persian. All right, and it uses a 154 cm steel, same steel that the Emerson pretty much uses in all his folders. Uh, G10 handle scales. It is a liner lock mechanism, 4 inch blade length. And you see the uh, the Persian style uh, tip and body design to the blade. Very cool. All right, and uh, you know Emerson knives. Uh, one of their mottos: number one hard use knives in the world, and famous in the worst places. Uh, Emerson knives are marketed uh, to police, to military people like that. However, Emerson knives have also become uh, quite popular with collectors if you look around YouTube. A lot of people enjoy collecting these and uh, or just using them as larger size uh, everyday carry knives. Here is a closer look at the knife itself. See the texture G10. Uh, the pivot screw which is a large uh, just a flathead screw. All right, the opening facility is that thumb disc there. Semi-closed construction. Open there with a spacer there. Stop pin. It is a single position pocket clip. Right side tip up only. Alright, the opening. It's pretty easy. Heard the lock up. The liner lock mechanism there. You want to see the lock up. Pretty early lock up on this one. And I think I can see bronze color there. Bronze phosphor washers I would think. And the blade itself, All right, you see the grind there. It looks uh, it looks pretty flat to me, partial flat, maybe a tiny bit hollowed. You see, they call this a satin finish, but as you can see, it's more close to a two-tone stonewashed finish. And I do think it looks very attractive. And you see, there, that looks very nice. Look at the penetration abilities on that tip as well as the full belly good slicing ability and you know it also just looks like a beautiful blade to me but now the uh, thumb disc is also a thumb rest all right for more leverage certain cuts has very nice ergonomics a lot of people really love the ergonomics on emerson's uh, you know finger groove there pinky ramp there see locks you in nice they put texture right there so nice, feels nice in the hand. And you see it does have a lanyard hole right there. And now some people have complained that uh, their Emersons were gritty opening out of the box. Uh, this one was not gritty at all. Um, hit the tripod. It opens very smoothly. Uh, either side locks up securely uh, no blade play on mine very clean cuts as you can see a very nice initial sharpness uh, all the Emersons that I've gotten all right, have been pretty much razor sharp out of the box. He does a very good job in giving you, you know, how it's supposed to be. Now keep in mind, as with other Emerson knives, um, the edge bevel, it goes farther back on one side than the other. You see how far the, um, the edge bevel goes back there? Right, and then on the other side, you can hardly even see the edge bevel. All right, so it's not symmetrical. But, um, you know, Emerson says that that makes it easier to resharpen in the field. Here is a size comparison with the Emerson Persian compared to some uh, pretty popular tactical folders. On the right, the well-known Spyderco Military. As you can see, four, around 4 inches in blade length is a very common size for, uh, for folders that are marketed as tactical folders. Uh, 3 and 3 quarters to 4 inches, probably the most common size range for this type of knife. Uh, next to the Persian on the left, the Benchmade 710. 
All right, and on the far left, Cold Steel Recon 1, that is the spear point model. As you can see, uh, it's very similar in overall length and in blade length to these other three uh, very popular tack folders. And as for the handle, uh, a, a lot bigger handle than on the Benchmade. Benchmades are pretty much known for trying to be slim and compact. Uh, the handle is roughly comparable to that on the Recon 1 and the Spyderco Military. Uh, provides a very good grip. All right, another size comparison, I just thought it would be interesting to show you it near some other Persian style blades. On the right, uh, the uh, Cold Steel Scimitar Spike, right, Persian design. And on the left, uh, Myrco Dirk Pinkerton Persian. I don't think I have any other folding knives that are Persians, but it's a very nice uh, design for penetration, slashing, slicing. Uh, I think more companies should make Persian designs. I like it a lot. All right, and here's a size comparison with another Emerson, the Emerson CQC8 Super. Right, and, you know, the Persian is a fairly large knife, so what I'm really showing here is how big the Emerson Super, Super Size Series folders are. Uh, that CQC8, it's, it's a huge knife with a huge handle. Uh, for big dudes, big hands, um, you know, big jobs, obviously. But yeah, that's that should show you the difference between a, like a regular standard size Emerson and the Super. All right. Oh, if you hear any background noise, uh, apologies. Neighbors mowing yard. Yes. But one one thing that some people might not like about this Emerson is that this does not have the Emerson Wave feature. Uh, Emerson Wave is basically a little notch that hooks on your pocket. It allows you to deploy the blade uh, in one motion from pulling it from your pocket. And, you know, this one, for some reason, they didn't put that feature on it. To me, that doesn't matter. In my experience, if you had to use a weapon defensively, whether a knife or even a handgun, most situations you either don't have time to pull it or you have plenty of time. It's very rare. It would be very, very, very rare to have a situation where a person was at the exact right distance that the wave feature actually mattered. Uh, that's not to say I don't like it. It's nice to have, but I'm just explaining why it's not a deal breaker to not have it on this knife for me. Now, sometimes Emerson's do not have the best fit and finish. Um, here you can see, um, I was pretty happy with this. There's there are no machining marks. On some Emersons, I've seen machining marks, but that, it, it looks perfect to me. There's no marks here either. The finish is, the finish is da damn perfect, I would say. I mean, that's a beautiful finish. The lockup was secure, early lockup, and no blade play. I like that. Uh, the centering, it, the centering is way over to that way. You know, I, I think you could adjust that. The opening was smooth. The only the only problem with the fit and finish I found on this knife. Well, let, let me see if first let me see if you guys can spot it. Kind of have to look close. I see. I see a little bit of a gap between that liner and that scale. A little bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see. And I do detect a little bit of a gap between that spacer and that liner. Alright, but, you know, I mean, that, I, I, that doesn't really matter to me that much. I mean, it's designed as a tactical knife. You'd have to look this close to see that even. So, yeah, I understand that that might bother, you know, some, some collectors are very, very finicky. Hey, you know... There's a reason why Emerson's are around 200 as opposed to 3 or 400 as uh, you know some knives are. And honestly, I've seen many videos where $400 knives had just as bad or worse uh, small problems like that. All right? It just seems, you know, it's very rare to get a perfect knife. But for what it is, I like this Emerson. Um, I have seen ones that did have like bad fit and finish problems. I purchased this from a store 
that had close-up pictures available of the knife. All right, that's how I avoid avoid getting a uh, getting a lemon. My overall opinion on this knife: uh, very glad to have got it. I would recommend it. Um, you know, Emerson pretty much markets his knife as a piece of equipment that could save your life and that could take the life of someone who's uh, truly endangering yours. Now is that an accurate claim? I believe it is. I believe uh, if you're a soldier or in law enforcement, I think this would serve you quite well. And I also think it's a great collectible piece. So yeah, this is my fourth Emerson knife so far, and I do plan to acquire more. Stay tuned for many more videos. I'm out of here.